Alright, what's up guys? Back again with another video. So this time I'm going to be going over uh, for statements for loops in Java. So uh, last last episode we went over the while loop, which is just a way to repeat code. But now we have the for loop, which is a way to repeat code, but much more efficiently. So um, yeah, so here's the basic anatomy of a for loop. So we got the for keyword and then initialization. Initi I don't know if that's probably not how you spell it. And then you have condition, which is something we already went over, and then iteration. So basically all these you know how to do, um, but they're all, you'll see, you'll see. You know how to do it already, basically. So, and then we have the code here, okay? So that's how we make a for loop, basically. So we can, let's just get rid of this, and let's get started. So we'll make a for loop here. And we're going to have, um, for the first one, we have the initialization, which is, if you remember, when you initialize something, it's most likely a variable. So uh, int, um, most commonly it's, it's i whenever you're making a for loop. So int i equals, we can start at zero. And then we have the condition next. So i, um, make sure you have the semicolon. And then you can say uh, i, as long as i is smaller than 100, and then another semicolon, and then the iteration, which is i plus plus something we, we went over last episode. So that's useful for obviously looping. So yeah, so every time it'll just run i plus plus. So likewise, we can do i, I minus minus. But anyway, we'll have the code in here. We could print out i. So let's try running that and see what happens. So it goes from about, let's see, 0 to 100, I mean 99. So yeah, that makes sense. So it's going to go, the first one is going to be 0, so i equals 0, so it's going to print out 0. And then as soon as it does that, it's going to do i plus plus, so now it's 1. And then it's going to print out 1 all the way to where um, i is equal to 100. And then it'll say, oh, it's equal to 100, so I don't have to run this anymore. So basically, it's just, yeah. So um, yeah, that's how you make a simple for loop. It's really, really simple. And you don't have to declare the variable right here. You could always just do this. So int i equals, or just int i, and then you could say like here, i equals zero. So it doesn't matter. It's just, yeah, it's pretty versatile. Um, so yeah. So let's go ahead and make a, a test program here. So we'll make a program that allows you to find a prime number, basically. So see if number is prime. So we're gonna, it's a prime number checker, excuse me. So we're going to have two things. We're going to have um, int number. So this is going to be the number that we're inputting here. And then we're going to have a boolean is prime. So that will be true if it's prime or false if it's not prime. Then we'll have, we'll set the number equal to 14. So that'll be a number. Oops. And then we can make our for loop here. Or we'll have an if statement first. We'll say this will be all on one line. Um, yeah, so this will be all in one line. So I didn't really go over on one line if it means what it's pretty simple, pretty simple. So if number is less than two, then is prime equal to false. So that what that just does, it says, um, well, if you don't know what a prime number is, and a prime number is a number that can only be uh, divisible by one and itself. So if it can't be divisible by seven, but it can be divisible by one and 14 for this number, then it's um, prime. Yeah. So yeah, 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 yeah. So prime number cannot um, be divided by anything except for itself and uh, one, basically. So also it can't be one. One is not a prime number. It just doesn't count, I guess. Um, so it'll say here if number is less than two, then prime number no. So that's what it's doing. And yeah. So and then we can have else here. Else is prime equal to true. So, yep, that's that. And then we could say a for statement here. <clears throat> and we could say for int i equals 2. So it starts at 2. i is less than or equal to number divided by i. And if you don't understand this, well, I'll go over it in a second. And then i plus plus to iterate. Now that we have that, we could do if... Um, number modulus i is equal to zero then is prime is equal to false and then break out of the loop so it'll be finished 
And don't worry, I'll explain this in a second, of course. Oops, single single thingy. Um, and then yeah, we could say at the end once at the end once the whole loop is done with and this is done with, you could say if is prime, then sal the number is prime. You say else the number is not prime. Okay, so let's go ahead and run that. So 14 is not prime because it can be uh, it can be divided by um, some other numbers like seven, uh, two, you know. So I mean, it's, it has factors basically is what you could say. So this is uh, just iterating through it, and then right here is the important part. It's saying if the modulus of the number divided by two, for example, equals zero, which means that it has no remainder, then it's uh, not prime. And then it'll break out of the loop. It's important because a number that can ev be evenly divided by another number that's not one or itself is not prime because then it has factors basically. If you divide 14 divided by 2 then you get 7 and if that's possible it's if it's evenly divided by another number it's just not prime. So that's yeah you can only divide it be divided by one in itself so that's why it does that. So yeah sorry if I'm explaining bad but you know if you don't know what a prime is then just look it up. So yeah, from there it just says um, it's not prime, false, All right? So and then it'll break out, and then it'll come here and it'll say, oh, oops, what the heck? I just broke. Yeah, okay. So it'll say, oh, it's not. It is prime. So I'm I'm gonna skip this, and then it'll just go here, or it's not prime. So yeah, and then I'll print that out. So yeah. Oh yeah. So there's also another thing if we want to use multiple commas when, like, if we want to have multiple uh, variables inside. So right here, if we do int, uh, let's say a and b, like we can do that. That's dynamic initialization or whatever you want to call it. And then we can say uh, b equals four. We got four loop here. We could say uh, a is equal to one, right? And then a equals smaller than b. And then a plus plus. Oops. Then we could just out. A and sal B. Oops, oops again. Struggling and then B minus minus. So that's a short little program. Yeah, and then you get some random numbers, right? But the point is, um, where we wanna like, what's the point of having this when we could just like you um, if we want like multiple in here, right? We don't wanna have like just yeah. Let's just make it simple. Is what I'm trying to say. So to do that, all you gotta do is put a comma right here, and then you can have multiple initializations inside of one. So that's very useful. So um, then you don't have to put it outside for every every other variable that you wanna have inside of here that's included inside your for loop. So yeah, that's very useful. So yeah, that's a basic um, overview of for loops. If you liked it, leave a like. If you wanna see more, subscribe. I'll be dropping a video pretty much every day. And peace.